guess I should tell you what I'm working on. <laughs> you're like, you're telling me all this stuff, but you're not actually getting to the point, asshole. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the cabin. Just out uh, shooting the film today on an update for you guys. I uh, put a little uh, note up on the community channel, see if anybody would be interested in seeing that. So I figured I'd uh, give you a little walk around. I'm right now down at the bottom of the stream and uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day out. It's uh, about zero degrees, so a bit chilly, but I'm out for the night and uh, Thought I might show you around a little bit of changes, but nothing too special. But I figured, hey, you know what? You guys watch the channel. You might want to know what's going on. I've been so busy at the other site that uh, I kind of neglected this this cabin a little bit. So let's uh, take a walk up and uh, take a look, and I'll show you what's going on. So as you can see, this is all cleared out now. Um, if you look behind me, it's pretty open. Um, what, was, what was originally there was uh, basically spruce trees. Um, I left all the hardwood because I didn't really need them. Uh, the spruce trees were what were kind of blocking out the light. So the purpose behind clearing it was twofold. One, to get more light on the cabin. Number two is I needed spruce because I'm going to be building projects. And uh, I just needed more material, so they seemed like a good resource. There's, you know, oodles of spruce around here. And I just thought it looked nicer in terms of, like, just aesthetics and view and the ridge line and so on and so forth. So I'm very happy with it. It was a lot of work. Uh, I didn't want to film it because it was just a lot of, a lot of just hands-on type stuff. But I'm very happy with the, uh, the outcome. And uh, it's already paid dividends with the amount of sun that I get in the morning. So, yeah. Enjoying it a lot. Okay, so most of you would have seen the wood storage before. Nothing special, nothing new. Not a finished product. Uh, as I said, there's things I'm doing now which I hope to lead to finish these types of projects. So I have a couple options with this guy. Uh, I could paint him. Uh, I could shingle the top. Uh, those are the rudimentary things I, I'd like to do, but I can't do that now until the spring because it's now too cold. Um, I do have a couple ideas which I'll talk about in a moment, but uh, those are the simple ideas, but I got more difficult ones I'd like to, to try possibly. Uh, but for now, it's doing an excellent job. It's keeping the rain off the majority of the wood. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I haven't burnt through too much of this. I'm actually going through last year's stores, getting rid of some of the crap wood that I had, and I'm just starting to get into the actual split wood from earlier this year. Uh, feel like I've been splitting wood all my life so far, but it, it's paid off and uh, it'll pay off from, for months uh, to go because just keeping that fire stoked up with hardwood is, has been a game changer, just a complete game changer. And, and coals, it's just, it's such a, such a huge benefit not to have to use softwood uh, other than maybe kindling, but even then I don't even really use it that much. So. Okay, so uh, I moved my entire wood pile over here. I had mainly softwood over there, but I've now replaced it and put it over here and restacked all my hardwood here. Uh, it's mainly birch and maple. Um, I use these pallets below to keep it up off the ground so it doesn't rot. It uh, allows for a little airflow. Uh, the wind tends to kind of come either up or down this valley. Um, it's usually not a harsh wind, but since I've split it so early, I can't see it not, you know, seeing it being a problem for next year. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. I think I'm done with wood for this year. I mean, I've got so much in that storage shed and I've got so much here. I, 
I can't see myself running out anytime soon. So very happy with that. Lots to harvest if I need it, but I don't really need it anymore. So a lot of that hard work is done and paid off already. And I'll be warm for a couple of years for sure. Uh, so I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you kind of what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, it's uh, big things going on around the, around the site. Okay, so these are all spruce logs. Um, these were, the majority of these were from the uh, entranceway uh, in. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I've obviously uh, stripped off all the bark, cut them into various lengths based on usability and, uh, you know, maybe future purposes. But for now, they're just kind of getting stripped, uh, cut to a certain length, and then set out here to dry. The majority of these will take months to dry. Uh, the project that I'm going to be working on isn't until the spring at the earliest. Uh, it's not ideal for uh, building with semi-wet wood, but, uh, you know, I'm willing to take a certain amount of risks. I mean, that's part of the process, and uh, I'm a little impatient. So this wood is going to be designed for two separate projects, um, so it'll be divided up accordingly. Um, I still have a ton more to harvest, but this is like the initial point because... This is all stuff from over there, and it's so it's being like 100% used. The only thing I can't use are the boughs, which sucks, but it's uh, it's a nominal loss with the amount of salvage I'm actually doing with this particular lumber. So these guys here are also remnants of that. So these are maybe the smaller pieces. This is the lower ends. These are the ends at the very bottom. Um, these are all cut to four and a half feet, and I'll explain why in a little bit. These will not be uh, stripped of bark immediately. They will be milled, though, into uh, basically planks is the goal. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've got about, I don't know, eight here. I'll need more, but this is a good start. And that's all salvaged from the trees around here. And uh, very useful. Uh, I've milled a bit already. And uh, it's pretty easy going once I get the chainsaw working the right way. And, yeah, I'm very happy with this progress so far. And uh, here we have two stations. Uh, they kind of work in tandem, and they're for the same purpose and different purposes. So here I have my weighted sawhorse. I strip a lot of the bark on the ends here. It's much like the butch bushcraft outpost design, where I have an edge that I can uh, trim and then do it on a lengthwise as well. Um, it's not as good. I'd like to think of something better, but for now, this is what will work. And what I have here are just basically two sawhorses. Uh, with a couple wedges put on them. Um, this is where I mill the lumber. Um, so the logs are generally pretty heavy. Uh, this will, will brace it in between. Or I can just set a square edge on here and then mill across that as well. I will have to adjust these because I need lower ones. So I think I might take some 1x2s and make a similar type of thing maybe on the other side so that I can mill to the lowest possible piece as possible. <laughs> as little possible piece as possible. And uh, yeah. Works okay. It's a little rickety, but like I said, the weight of the logs kind of helps a little bit. Uh, the mill itself isn't horribly heavy, but you can be a little lopsided if you're not too careful because you have a. I use a single guide rail, which is not uh, not probably the best method because I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for usable pieces of wood at this point. So I've uh, spent a fair bit of time on this. It has its challenges, but I think milling in general has has challenges so very happy with it so far but I'm sure I'll upgrade it and improve it as I go along okay so what we got here is just a few milled boards just something I did really quick the other day because I just bought the mill when about two weeks ago and I just was like happy and excited so I decided well I, I gotta try this I have to try this thing so I took a, a small log and ripped off a few pieces it went fairly well. I had some challenges in terms of um, uh, smoothness and what the actual mill was doing. Uh, one problem, for example, was that I needed a different angle on the chainsaw blades or the chainsaw uh, ch links or bleh, the chainsaw uh, chain itself. And it, I needed a, a particular angle that would cut more appropriately for going lengthwise as opposed to cross cutting. Um, I've uh, grabbed a bunch of 2x2s and cut them up, uh, and these are to space the wood so it can dry. 
Now this isn't the best milled wood, but I figured, you know what, it's like, I might as well try and get the most of everything. And if I can use it, I'd like to keep it and use it. So yeah, so I'll space everything as I build it up. It's going to get out of control here, so I'm going to have to think of some better methods. But I have more pallets over there that I can use to do this as well. And uh, I bet a little bit of a setup behind me here as well. Okay, so uh, the other thing I did the other day are these little 4x4 four four posts. They're generally about 7 feet or less, uh, maybe just a hair less. Uh, a, three of them turned out really well, one didn't, and the one that didn't was obviously the first one I did. Um, it was a considerable amount of work, but extremely rewarding. I'm very happy with what I got out of it, and uh, yeah, I'm just so excited to have this opportunity to do this because uh, these... These are, you know, can be fairly expensive to buy at the store, and for the cost of a little bit of gas, a little effort, a little hard work, um, this it's just, you know, technically free in a lot of ways. And I think it's, um, I think you'll put more, uh, what would you call it, more heart into what you're building, and you'll have more sentimentality because you put that hard work into that. And I think that's uh, that's what I'm shooting for, um, kind of building things with your own hands. I mean, the cabin was what it was, and, and it's been... I wouldn't be doing this now if I hadn't built the cabin the way I did. If I had done it any other way, I'd still be in the Stone Age over there, freezing my butt off trying to build something. So this is now a facilitator for these kinds of things. So I have uh, two or three projects I'm going to work on at this site and the other site. And uh, uh, I'll show you one more place uh, of storage, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the things I got in mind. Okay, so this is the last bit. Um, what these are are the corner slats of all the 4x4s that I cut off. So they're just straight edges, relatively. Like, they're a little, you know, wonky. Overall, they're pretty straight. Um, so I painstakingly stripped all the bark off them after the fact, which was a horrible idea, by the way, and put them here. I'm just going to lay them as flat as I can, and as I get any or more in the future, I'm going to just stack them up here. Uh, my way of thinking is good quality spruce. They're not very thick, but they could easily act as a uh, siding. They could act as trim if split in two. They could act as roofing, uh, siding. Uh, just aesthetic things. You could just do anything you want with them. So, again, I stripped them really lightly with the with the uh, bark stripper. Uh, they're not perfect, so they're, but they're close enough so they don't rot. And that's the whole goal. Is I just don't want anything to rot. Uh, for example, those eight logs that are going to be probably milled today because I don't want them to rot. And, and it'd be such a waste of my effort and time, and then obviously nature giving me these trees to work with. I don't think it's uh, it's responsible to let me, or responsible for me to let these sit around and just rot and not be used and not make useful. There's a handful of offcuts I have over there which I'm going to try and make something into, but for now this is a good way to salvage something. I see people online, you know, trying to sell these off for kindling and stuff like that. Like they just don't have use for it because they don't strip the bark off it, and that's the biggest thing. And they don't see the value in these things. Um, it's 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 an interesting thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to like leftover stuff. If I can find a use for it, I want to. Uh, but it's not always the case, unfortunately. So, so I'm happy with that. Uh, it, will it be perfect? Will they, will they dry straight? Probably not. But I think I still can use them. I think I can find something for them. Okay, so that's that. That's all the exterior stuff. Uh, it's definitely a big change. I'm very happy with everything. It was, it was a, a crap ton of work, and I'm shooting those other videos over at the, uh, the other site, and I've just been kind of like popping back and forth doing work. Uh, it's been, it's been a lot of work, a lot of physical work, and um, I'm very close to injury. I think, I, I think I'm starting to get to the point where I'm causing damage because. Some of these logs I've been carrying are only four and a half, five feet, but 
I guarantee you to get them on my shoulder and my legs off, they were probably 80, 100 pounds, maybe more. Uh, they're not light and they're very difficult to move around and even even those short ones over there those are still 60 70 pounds each which is surprising but it's all wet wood uh, another interesting fact it's probably been about a year since I shot a video in a similar circumstance in November the snow came early I sat out on this deck and had a little conversation with you so it's kind of interesting to uh, kind of note the changes that took place this this uh, this entire summer uh, I've got this awning I got the storage shed I've got the kindling shed I've got all the lumber done I've got um, what else did I did I did a kitchen countertop I insulated it I painted or I got my girlfriend to paint the side of the the cabin I uh, put in an extra window uh, I put in inside shutters, I put in a coat rack, I put in shelves, I put in a floor, uh, just tons of stuff. I mean, I, and I didn't spend a lot of money, which was kind of funny. Uh, usually these things do cost a lot of money, but so yeah, it's been extremely productive when I look back, yet it didn't feel like it at the time. It just felt like normal, I guess, is, is maybe the way I would put it. I am very happy with everything. Um, there's not a lot more I can do. It's winter time now. My access to the cabin in terms of vehicles will, will be limited to a couple kilometers or a kilometer. So probably about a kilometer to get here. It's not very far, but it's you've got to sled everything in at a certain point. I can't actually drive in my car. It just doesn't have the juice for that. Oh, and the other thing is I cleaned up behind the behind the cabin, like the shower is now a storage for all those benches and, and tables and stuff because I just want them out of the elements. All the lumber and wood has been moved and cleaned out. Anything that could freeze and or be, uh, be a nuisance or rust has all been shipped home and, and taken away because it's, if it's not appropriate for winter use, there's no point in storing it out here. Um, so it opens up the area back there if I need it. So it'll be basically... Uh, you know for maintenance of my chainsaw and, and whatnot because that is one thing I will be able to do throughout this winter uh, for example I'd like to practice my milling <laughs> practice my milling uh, it makes me giddy because it's so much fun like it's so rewarding uh, practice that a bit for the rest of the day sometime once the fire gets going and the dog's squared away I'd like to take down a few more posts so that it'd give me an opportunity to do some more bark stripping for that. Um, oh, so I guess there's, there's good, I guess I should tell you what I'm working on. <laughs> you're like, you're telling me all this stuff, but you're not actually getting to the point, asshole. Okay, so some of those posts over there are going to be for a fence, and the fence is going to be a perimeter fence only going up so far around the cabin and then down to about that area there maybe into the bushes a bit so it's a massive massive project it's got to be three feet high out of the ground that means it's probably going to be have to be a foot and a half two foot in the ground at least a foot and a half minimum from what i can tell and then it's going to need uh dividers or uh, i guess rails uh, every four feet three high one at every three quarters foot to a half foot in that proximity. Uh, the idea being is that, well, aesthetically it'd be, it'd be nice, but at the same time is that with the dog here, um, by kind of cornering her in, so I can just let her roam as free as I want. Like, I can for the most part, but in the summertime with the ATV ears, it really riles her up and she wants to go around after them. And I'd rather just have her barking away and then know that she's not chasing them. So the goal with that is to make that fence. So that's the posts. And those posts, the small ones, be cut into slats and then used as uh, lumber to join them together. So you kind of see where I'm going with that. The other thing that's uh, the most pressing thing that I can think of at this site is that we have um, a latrine probably just sitting into the bushes there. It's not too far away. It's, it's useful, obviously, <laughs> um, but it is... Uh, for lack of a better word, not very high quality. 
So I'm going to build an outhouse. So this is what this whole thing's about. So the posts are the four posts for the outhouse. And then the planks will be the siding. And then some of the logs will be part of the roof. And then maybe the slats will be some of the roofing. And then I'll maybe mill my own door. That kind of stuff. If you kind of follow my drift on that. From there, uh, other projects would be to finish up the, the shed there. Uh, painting and stuff in the spring. But for the most part, in terms of milling, I can do this now, this time of year, throughout the winter, and get it ready for the spring and summer. And uh, the outhouse will be, you know, m much welcome just in terms of convenience, if nothing else. Um, past that, uh, I'd like to make a covered pavilion. I guess you call it a pavilion, a hut maybe? Covered hut for the cook area. Um, specifically for summer, spring, summer, and fall usage where you want to be out of the rain, but you, it's not hot enough. It's not cold enough to use the, the stove. But it's hot enough uh, that you can you know, pop outside and you can be covered from the rain and then still cook your food and stuff like that while you're out here. Um, obviously, this will still be fenced in and still have barbecues and all that kind of stuff. But I thought it would be a nice option when you're working here and then the extra smoke and stuff will um, um, you know, keep the flies away and all that jazz. So that's the idea. Um, I do like the setup there, but there's the other option is I actually build the, that pavilion, so to speak, or that hut over around this corner and deeper in, level off the area, and then make an actual cook area, which is something I think I might do. Um, and that way it's, it's not actually in the way of, of the cabin and the cabin view, and then it can be used there. And then I guess it wouldn't be dissimilar to my self-reliance uh, cook shelter where you have like, you know, a cook station and, and prep area and stuff like that. Just not as big and as elaborate. I'm not, I'm not that skilled. So uh, I'm a dumb dumb when it comes to some of this stuff. So yeah, so that's the plan for all that stuff. And uh, I'm very excited about it. It's probably uh, since building the cabin, this has been, you know, the next big project, that and the outpost. Uh, so I'm very happy with it.